we talk about national competitiveness. We talk about innovation and innovation policy. How does that fit into the picture? And is that uh, perhaps uh, an area where we can have win-win yeah. solutions to these issues? Mona? So it's, it's, I'm glad you asked that question because um, I couldn't agree more. And I've thought for many years, and it's now kind of come to a head in this, in this whole cycle, that um, we've just been really bad. I'm a huge free trader my whole career, but we've been terrible at making the micro arguments for trade. We've been terrible at dealing with the legitimate consequences of trade dislocation at the micro level, at the individual town, factory, community level. All of our solutions sit at the macroeconomic level. So I, there is a silver lining right now, and you see it in the public support for trade suddenly, that people realize, oh no, this actually affects my job and my wages and whether or not my company is gonna be expanding my hours, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm really hoping we take advantage of this window right now when we have people's attention as a community, business community, and broader than that, to start dealing with some of the dislocation effects so that this is a durable source of support. And what does that mean? That means real worker retraining, real worker mm -hmm. mobility, it means an inclusion agenda because we know that the workforce is going to be diversifying significantly, which is a big potential win in this, in this landscape. And it also means really, I think, making a much better and more granular case about why your average American could, should care. Um, and it's not the kind of thing that you can do as a one-off just when the pressure is on. You have to do all the time. And we just kind of dropped the ball on that. We just assumed it would be good because we said it was going to be good. And it if, wasn't good. Uh,